Good morning, everybody. Um, firstly, thank you very much uh, for giving up an hour of your time today. Um, I'm just looking through the attendees list, and um, I know you can't see me, but um, I'm amazed that I know I know probably 75% of you, maybe more. So, uh, welcome and hello, especially to those who I haven't seen for a long time. Um, today, uh, we're doing the first of a series of one-hour webinars. Uh, using SketchUp for landscape and garden design. Um, this is being supported by SketchUp and in particular the UK distributor ElmTech. And the, if you want to go to the um, welcome to sketchup.co.uk website, um, you can see forthcoming events. Um, as I said, this is the first of three, of uh, four, so there'll be three more, which you can sign up to if you haven't already on that website and see what else ElmTech do to support the SketchUp world. So let me just I'm using no version. Um, what we're going to look at today is really basic. I don't make any apologies for that because if anybody has been to uh, one of my classes uh, previously, then we probably spend 15 minutes setting up SketchUp so that every time you open it it is the same and the icons and the styles and the units are the way you want them to be and you're not going to get caught out by having to then waste you know five ten minutes hunting down a setting that you really didn't really know was buried in there so i'm going to try and cover most of what um i think you need to know we're also going to jump into layout and set layout out mostly because uh, the next sessions i don't want to be going backwards and forwards, covering basic settings. And I'd rather do it all in one go. And this is being recorded. I'm guessing it will go up onto the social media and to YouTube. And so you can review all of your setup in one go. I have literally just opened a session of SketchUp. I have used one of the default templates. It doesn't matter which one you use to get going in SketchUp, because we're pretty much going to change everything. So, first thing I'm going to do is decide what unit I want to be modeling in. Some people have preference for millimeters, and um, today I'm going to set it to units. So, that's to meet you. So, um, I'm using a Mac view, alterations between a Mac interface and the PC interface, and I'll highlight those. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to window. Uh, text list, and right at the bottom it says units. I'm going to pick decimal. I'm going to make sure I've got meters, and I'm going to have a display uh, precision of three decimal places. I would prefer my area to be in meters square and my volume to be in meters cubed. If I was working on a pond, I might come in here, and if I'm trying to assess how the uh, how much water I need or how much water is available in the uh, the design, so that I can then do a calculation for pumps, I might change this to liters. Um, so that was a 2020 change, which is really useful for the things I do. I untick the box that says enable length snapping, and I untick the box that says enable angle snapping, because not much that I do really is on a rigid grid. And you can type in the actual angles and units that you want. So I make sure that having these ticked can lead to some errors where certain lines don't quite meet or things aren't the length that you think they're going to be. That's it, close that window down, nothing else to do. Um, I watch quite a lot of SketchUp stuff on YouTube and quite a lot of presenters keep this grey background. I prefer, it's probably a good background to have for presentation, it's not a good background to have for creating documents and presentations. Frequently, I will create some geometry and I want to set up something that I can export either to an external program or over to layout. 
and the way I want it to arrive is with a transparent white background. It keeps the documents much cleaner. It also means that I don't carry over this background, which it's grey in SketchUp. It would be grey in layout and would pretty much suck up loads of ink on the printers. So I prefer to switch to a white background. There are several ways of doing this. And let me just, sorry, I just saw that little window down there, just close that down. So several ways of doing this. Um, I'm going to go to Window and Styles. Various options here. Um, I have a personal preference. I'm under the default styles. And I'm going to pick, uh, I think it's this one here. On a Mac, if you hover over any icon, then usually within a second you get the label. So it's shaded with textures. Slightly different on a PC. Um, I can't show you, I'm afraid, but under the default styles, make sure that it's shaded with textures. There's these little green, you can maybe just see them, um, stopwatch symbols are the faster pro processing geometry and shadow analysis, it will take a little bit longer. So I'm going to pick. Shade of green, but it, it's merged. Director Laura, it's put a or taken away the profile line. Now, profile lines can be useful in some circumstances, but if you've got a lot of geometry uh, with plants, um, trees, curved surfaces, then when you've zoomed out and you're looking at a much larger scene, larger scene, the profiles can actually get in the way and obscure some of the geometry. So again, I try to keep it clean and simple. Whilst we're in styles, it's also useful just to go to edit and just change a few settings. The one we're going to change is um, profiles. Now at the moment, profiles is switched off. Um, I actually want to switch profiles on, which is completely contrary to what I've just told you. But if I switch profiles on, it puts a thicker line around Laura. I don't want the thick line, I want the thin line. So I'm going to change that to one, not two. Now, why did I do that? Because the result is exactly. Same. But now that I've got profiles active, if I have a curved job. Um, on screen. If it didn't have a profile, you would not be able to see. Draw the job that actually isn't present. So it will draw the silhouette of a cylinder. So you can see the sides and attribute a thin line to it. So it looks, um, it becomes visible. So if I'm doing uh, black and white line drawings, whether they're construction drawings or explanatory drawings, and I'm not using any shadow, then having the profiles for organic surfaces, plants and trees becomes really useful. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into these little cube box icons and I'm going to pick the end one. And right at the bottom it says uh, section line width and I'm going to change that to one as well. I can change that when the section arrives in something like layout but if I left that at three and I created a cross section in SketchUp, it puts a very chunky line and it looks, looks like it's been done with a marker or a crayon. So again, keeping that sharp. And that's all I'm going to do in here. Icons. This is where one of the significant differences between a Mac and a PC. So, um, I can't show you the PC, but they're both under the same location, which is under view. Now we'll start with the uh, main tool sets. So under tool palettes, I want to pick the large tool sets. On a PC, by picking the toolbars, you would open up a window. And from memory, you want to switch off the getting started and switch on the large tool sets 
and um, styles, views, warehouse. Um, I think that's it. It might be another one, but um, on a PC, uh, that's on a PC, on a, the Mac, go to the large tool sets, and that puts this panel, uh, which is a floating set of icons. Uh, if you're left handed, maybe you put it on the right hand side. I'm used to having my icons on the left hand side. I've already got some icons at the top because I was playing around earlier, so I'm going to alter what I've got on the top of my graphic window. So I'm going to go back, but instead of tool palettes, I'm going to go down to customize toolbar. Now on a Mac, you've got the option of selecting individual icons. Because I've got some additional extensions installed, I've got rather a lot of icons. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to my current icon set. They're all slightly shifting if you look carefully. I'm just going to drag them down and there's a very satisfying cloud of dust as they evaporate. So just, I'm going to get rid of all of them. That noise like a train. So I've now got no icons across the top. Going back to my custom tool palette, I'm going to pick the ones that I use on a regular basis. I'm not one of these people who likes to see lots of, I don't like to have my entire icon collection on display. You can always go in and open up extensions and pull in things as you need them. So really it's what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm gonna go for standard views, these little Monopoly style houses. Uh, the one next to it is styles, and these display the way SketchUp geometry looks on screen. Undo redo is a very useful function. You can have that up here. Um, there are keyboard shortcuts I prefer to use, but you might want to use the icons. And then I'm also going to the shadow function, but it switches. There's a plugin that comes along that I use on this. Then I would activate it and have it on display, whether it's through the icon tool set or by going to view. Under tool palettes, I can activate any download extension. So I've got several of them, and it would put those icons in their own little tool panel. But for today, we're just going to keep it simple. Now, the other thing I want to display, um, I noticed I've already got my, it was open a second ago, which is I'm going to go to my window and on the Mac to pick tags and entity info. Now, on a PC, that would be under window default tray. And that puts all of your panels down the right hand side. So over here, I've got my, oops, got my tags and my entity info. I'm sort of struggling because I'm looking underneath the webinar control panel. And here we go. So there's the entity info. I have those open all the time because I'm constantly making geometry and then giving it its own tag, what we used to call layers. 
and then using the entity info to move objects between layers and using the tags to hide and unhide geometry. So I prefer to have those two open. And on a PC, those would be the two windows I would have open and I would have all the rest collapsed. So we set up our icons, we set up our tags, and we got a white background and the right units. Things um, which are useful to do. Um, but by default, in order to do shadows, um, SketchUp needs to appreciate where it is axes cross um, behind Laura here um, is a point, the origin. And that is the picture references when you create geometry, but also makes the assumption of that being a point on the planet. And that default to Colorado, Boulder, uh, probably the parking lots of the SketchUp offices. So when you just switch on shadows, then you're going to get the shadows that relate to the default position. So it's on a, a project by project basis, but it's quite helpful if you have everything set, at least to somewhere locally to start with. And the way we do that is file and geolocation. And under geolocation, we can add location, pop up. And on here, type in do region, and I'm not really worried that whether it's postcode specific because the sun position is going to be relatively the same in most places for me in the southeast of England but if you're in Scotland then just use one location north will change on a project by project basis but that's for a meet template for a different region so I can't recall off the top of my head any other location so I'm going to pick somewhere close you'll notice it's to here. That region pins appear and all of that piece of terrain. Nothing else. Out of the database. Hi Paul. Uh, sorry everyone, this is Lauren from uh, from Elm Tech SketchUp. We're just getting some really bad intermittent dropping out of the audio, Paul. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, it might be your Wi-Fi, if you could maybe move closer to it, perhaps? Okay. Yep, I've, I've just rearranged equipment. Okay, I'm going to pop off now, everyone. <laughs> Sorry about this. I'll let you get on now, Paul. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lauren. Um, I apologise for that. Obviously, I have no idea what's going on. Right. Um, I'm hoping it's recorded um, better than maybe it transmitted. So what's happened here is that field has now been brought and placed at those crosshairs um, in the centre of my SketchUp session. And by doing so, it's relocated the geolocation from Colorado to 
in this case, West Sussex. I don't need this um, piece of terrain. It was just part of the exercise. So what I'm going to do is if I go over to my tags, my layer structure, I you will notice that where I only had an untagged layer previously, two more have automatically been added. And the location terrain and the location snapshot. So that's what came in with this piece of ground. I don't need them. So I'm going to select the first one, but I could try and delete it, but I can't delete it because the geometry on it is locked. And I know it's locked because when I select it, it has a red box around it, not a blue box. If I right hand click over it, I get the unlock option. So now we have regular geometry and I can delete it or I can simply delete the layer. If I go and switch on the location terrain, which is the three dimensional version rather than just the uh, pictorial flat version. Um, unlock that and un delete that layer as well. So I'm going to delete the contents. So now we're back to what we had before, but we've used the location services to move us back to this country. As you build up a model in SketchUp, um, you will, um, which we will go through um, in the next sessions, but you'll be making geometry and then you will be attributing that geometry to particular layers or tags. And so you will have to create these as you go. But I find it useful to have a template that has standard tags or layers already created. It is much easier to delete stuff than it is to create it. It also prompts me to create reasonable tags uh, with reasonable names, not just um, ones that are going to be a bit meaningless when I come back into a project in six months time. So even though these are going to be initially empty, um, it can be good practice to create some of these empty tags to start with. So you might create a tag for trees. Don't forget to hit return after you, you type. Um, I always have things like furniture. Now, etc. And I didn't type. There we go. Didn't hit return. Furniture. Hit return. Before I type any more, um, having things like furniture and trees and plants and people is really easy. Just you simply create them. But I'm going to stop there because there are some cases where you will be using data that you've imported from somebody else. So if you're working on a survey from an architect or a surveyor and you've imported geometry, then that imported geometry will honor um, the layer structure that the software that they used to create in. So if it's come from AutoCAD, you will inherit the layer structure. And you can end up with a huge layer structure and um, it's organized alphabetically, alphanumerically, um, and alphabetically. So what will happen is all the numbers will come first and then after that everything will be A, B, C. And if you've got trees and furniture, your labels will be distributed inside somebody else's layer structure. And, it, and if they've got a layer called trees or furniture, it can be really difficult to start distinguishing between the two. So I find a good practice is don't create layers called trees or furniture or whatever but to give them a unique combination of letters at the beginning. And it might be that it's your company initials or your personal initials or some kind of number letter combination, but something that you recognize as yours. Now my company is called Green Zone, so I use GZ-Trees. So I'm going to rename my furniture GZ-Furniture. Um, we'll create one more, and I might have GZ dash, I don't know, um, vehicles. You get it. GZ is an unusual means of being recognized, and even if my layers get buried, 
very appreciate which ones are mine and then start editing out or collapsing other people's layers. Now, the other thing that you will create as you make projects, which again you'll see in our future sessions, is something called scenes. Now, scenes are essentially saved views, but one scene can differ from another because you can switch things that um, are on their tags on and off. So you switch visibility, you can switch color, you can switch between textures, you can switch between elevations and perspective. So they're really useful. They're essentially snapshots that you will use to generate drawings. Just like your tags, you really don't want to have default, you know, tag one, tag two. You don't want scene one, scene two, scene three, because in the future you will very quickly forget what scene one and scene two is. So you need to give them meaningful names, and whatever those names are will depend on the nature of the project. But there's always it's always useful to have at least one scene that is your working scene. And invariably, you'll start modeling and forget to set this up. So it's useful in the template to view, animation, add scene, creating a new style because this is different to the picture on. I right hand click over it, I can rename it work or working scene. Hit return. And in this working scene, I would have things switched on or swing things switched on. I never model with shadows. I rarely model with texture switched on. So those would be the things that would be by default. I'm not really going to know what I'm setting up until I start creating a model. Empty session. SketchUp. Invariably, I click on the left and start dragging out over to the right hand side. If you're left-handed, you might want to put Laura on the right-hand side so that you're naturally moving in the way that you're, you prefer your hand to draw. The position of Laura and the position of our panels will be what is captured in the template. So I um, am just going to, uh, I think I'm happy with that. Invariably, I will make changes and have preferences, and so will you. But the first thing I want to do before I go into that is simply go File, Save As. There is an option for Template. And that pops a window. And the first thing I want to do is make sure it's ticked, set as default. Every time I open SketchUp, this configuration will present itself. Give it a name. So. I might call this GZ meter template or GZ meter. I don't really need to do anything else. In the description, it's in meters. So meter, comma, white background. The other major change here, oops, be careful not to hit return in description, otherwise, it immediately um, saves you out. So white background, geolocated Sussex. So at least I can see when I look uh, into the description which template is for Sweden, or I might have one for Germany, or I might have one for Scotland. And then hit save. To welcome to SketchUp. And there it is, my GZ meter template is the first one. It adds it right at the beginning. So we're going to pick that one. If I want to make a change to this in future, then all I do is set it up. I open up the one I want, 
set it up, move Laura around, change my icons, change my units, change which panels that I want. If I've got any plugins, then I would activate or deactivate them and then simply file, save as templates and copy over or give it a new name. So you don't edit um, an old template, you simply overwrite it or create a new one and then set whichever one you want to be your default. But whilst we're here, also worth just mentioning probably the thing you will spend a lot of time in and a lot of frustrating time in, which is the SketchUp 3D Warehouse. And that is accessed through this icon down on the bottom left of my large tool set. And it's a little brown box with a SketchUp logo in it. And I'm going to click and it opens up here. So I'm simply going to go to my content. Now you can go into this, uh, but you have to register in order to access and download. And that's a new feature, but it's really useful because it forces you to um, start using it in a more intelligent way. It's pointless just coming in here, finding a planter, downloading it, and then on the next project thinking, I really like that planter, but now I can't find it. And you can hunt around for 20 minutes and it's a waste of time. It's worth putting in a couple of hours work creating your online libraries and probably doing it every month or so as new objects or as you're finding that you need more planters or more pieces of furniture or more trees in your library. So the first thing you need to do is log in. Hopefully um, when you download SketchUp, you will remember what your Trimble login and if you're prompted, you have to uh, put that information in. But if you're in and out of here on a daily basis, then SketchUp tends to remember. So I'm already logged in. You want to go to your content. And content is split into two areas. The content that I have created and uploaded into the library and the content that's waiting for me to download it. And at the moment, I it says it's empty because I've not uploaded everything. I have, but this was updated recently um, as a whole structure for the new warehouse and I lost all of my old profile, so I'm having to start from scratch. But on the left hand side are some icons and the second one down is folders. And if you use Pinterest, you'll be very familiar with the way this works. Instead of folders, think of them as boards. And you're, I think you've got a default limit of 50, but under folders, what you want to do is add a folder and you want to create folders that are groups of objects that you're likely to need in your garden. So I've got by default some vehicles, fence panels, garden furniture, shrubs, trees, planters, 2D people, 3D people, metalwork, and garden objects, things like wheelie bins and things. So you could easily create 20 or so, and you simply then go looking for objects. So if I want to go looking for a planter, I simply type planter, or whatever keyword and then up comes a list and this list as I can see here is over a thousand items long. Now the way the warehouse works is by donation. People around the world who are particularly pleased with some models that they've created will upload them and make them available to everybody else. So what you have to do is determine is that object any good? Does it suit my purposes? Am I happy to use it in future projects? So um, I'm going to pick this planter here. Um, I'm not going to pick this planter here because I've just looked at the file size and it's three megabytes, which is a lot of geometry for a planter, as great as a planter is. Now, most of that will actually be in the texture. Um, and I can reduce that inside SketchUp, but really I'm probably better placed going to find something else. So I'm being obviously really picky here, but let's go with this one here. 29 kilobytes, it's a really, really small file size. And 
the temptation is I can hit download and it will put it straight into my session of SketchUp. But I don't want that. If I go to my folders, so just like pinning, up pops all my um, folders and I can pick the one that I want, which is plan. If you find an object that you haven't yet got a folder for on the fly, because at the bottom it says create a new folder. In this case, I'm going to hit planter. And then don't forget to hit the bar planter folder. It's now been pinned into that folder and I can carry on searching for more and more objects. You get 10 of categories and at least that gives you a starting point. Do not try and find plants and trees by species. What you really want to do is hunt for plants and trees that are by form. So if you can find a multi-stem tree, then you can stretch it to make it taller and you can compress it and twist it to make it uh, look shorter. You can take a grass that might be a carex and you might be able to stretch it so it looks a bit more like a miscanthus. So you want the fountain grass, the upright grass, the multi-stem tree, the more uh, conical head tree. And then you can use that as a, a proxy representation for several species because you really won't be able to um, get a species through DCAD. I'm quite happy with everything that we've set up. We, um, I don't need to save that. The, the warehouse is saved outside of SketchUp. So we're finished with working in SketchUp. So what we're now going to do is go into Layout and set that up. So let me just... Okay. So I am now opening up um, in Layout. I'm doing this independently of SketchUp. So I've gone into my toolbar and selected Layout. So that will be in your SketchUp folder. You can open it independently of SketchUp. So you can use it as an independent drawing package without using SketchUp geometry. You want to create um, a couple of sheets. Um, so I want to create some drawing sheets. So it offers me a whole load of defaults, A3, A4, um, but I work on A3 and A2. Um, I may want to create an A1 drawing sheet. I want a title block, and then I really want um, layout to be ready for when I start doing things uh, and putting my drawings together. I'm going to pick an A3 just to start with. And I'm just going to close these windows down because we'll, we'll talk about these shortly. And the first thing I'm going to do is really, uh, before I get there, the grid that you see is a temporary grid. It's a drawing aid. When you print and save, then this grid disappears. So don't worry that there's grid lines everywhere. But I'm going to go to File Document Setup. Now, uh, with a PC, um, you have an option for drawing sizes, but in a Mac, you don't. So under paper, I actually have to input the dimension. So if I'm going to start with an A2 piece of paper, um, I know that an A2 piece of paper is 594 by 420. I'm going to leave margins set at 10. And then I'm going to say close. And there is my A2 piece of paper. Now, layout is two dimensional. You can manipulate three dimensional geometry in it. And we might look at that in uh, one of the other sessions. But what we're really trying to do is set up drawing templates. So every time I bring in a drawing, it goes onto a drawing sheet with my details on it or your details. So if you're familiar with PowerPoint, it's really similar. You just draw lines, create text boxes, and you're away. So very simple. I'm not going to create the world's greatest um, title block, but you'll get the idea. So 
I'm going to start by just drawing a guideline. Your drawing tools will snap to the grid. You can switch that off under a um, it's under a range, grid snap or object snap, but at the moment grid snap is quite useful. What do we have in a drawing block? So um, I'm just going to go to the uh, text tool. Um, layout looks like it's got very few icons. There aren't many more, but um, it's got everything I think you need. Things that I want in my uh, drawing sheet. So I want to have client name. This is really small, so let me just uh, make that slightly bigger. Oops, there we go. Okay, at least you can see that a bit better now. So, um, client name. Um, I can copy and paste in exactly the same way that I can in SketchUp. I can click on an item, I get the little move icon, and then if I hit um, Control or um, Alt on a Mac, then I get the little plus symbol, just like SketchUp, and then I can drag a copy. So what I want to do here is um, title, and then this one I want to be um, project. I'm not making these by hitting return, typing. Hitting. I want all of these to be independent so that I can move them around on their own. So I might put that here. I might put that here. I might put that here. My text is too big, but I can change that shortly. Um, I might have something that says notes. I might have something that then um, is all about revisions. You can copy lots, there's uh, lots of title blocks on things like Pinterest. Um, if anybody's really interested, I can do a, a quick screen grab. In fact, I might have a screen grab of my own. Um, but really what you think you want to have in the drawings that you're conveying. Um, I always have, so I'm just thinking of these as I go, but um, I always have status, whether it's planning or quotation or discussion. Um, I might have something uh, with revision where I have um, a couple of spaces, description, the spaces, date, Oops. be a bit more consistent, date, date. Right. Again, I'll change the typeface afterwards. And finally, um, I'm just going to put in a title block, which is green design, hit return, it has Sussex, tell, mobile, email. So, uh, information. Under window, there's a text box, and this is the text box, so mine's already open. So I can play around with the position of the text. I can play around with the size of the text. So I might make this 13. I might make this more like 12. I might make this more like 12 as well. This might be um, 14 and then these all might be 14. So I'm just reducing these. Um, maybe you prefer to have your information in little boxes. 
So I'm just using the rectangle tool to draw a box. Now, it fills boxes automatically. So under window, I've got a whole load of sub panels. So shape style is one of the most used ones. On a PC, all of these panels appear by default on the right hand side, but I'm going to just open up some of the more frequently used ones. Um, pages is always useful. Uh, layers, really useful. And what I'm going to do is just stack these up so that I've got access to them. Shape size is one of the most frequently used and it allows you to control the geometry. So in this case, I've got a box and it's filled with white and I can unswitch the fill. And then I can pick that box and maybe drag it down. So I can start to zoom in a bit. Maybe just arrange my title block so that it's a, a little bit neater. And maybe I will drag that one down, pull that one in. Maybe I can pick that box up to here. I can drag and reshape that box. The graphics that you draw in layout are vector based because they're two dimensional. Um, so that they display really well. I do all of my labeling and dimensioning in layout because I get true type. So if I zoom into my text, I just keep zooming and zooming and zooming because it doesn't deteriorate, because it's generated mathematically, not graphically. When you bring geometry in, and particularly text attached to the geometry from SketchUp, it's, it's rasterized, it's pixel-based, so it doesn't have very sharp edges, which is fine maybe for A3, but anything bigger, the imagery starts to break up. It also means I can come in here and edit it, whereas you cannot edit imported text or labels from SketchUp. So I'm just going to move my notes up to the top. Um, you get the idea. Um, you can import a logo in here. I'm hoping that I've got one on my desktop or I can go file, insert, oops, file, insert. So I can go hunt down a piece of geometry, maybe bear with me in my documents. Um, green zone and um, I've probably got something in marketing. But I think it's in green zone um, branding. So lots of them. So I'm just going to grab a logo. I'm not sure it's the right one and it comes in. So it could be a PNG, it can be a JPEG, um, it could be a TIFF, and I'm just going to maybe grab those and just shift them up a bit, bring this down, grab my logo, and then resize in the traditional way you do these things with little handles, and then make it fit. And I don't need maybe my guideline anymore. So now I've got a, a drawing sheet. If you want to border around the entire drawing sheet, pick your rectangle tool. It will snap to the grid, drag to the whole frame. It obliterates everything, but if you select it and then untick the fill, and then maybe you think I want these just to nudge across, so I can pick them and they will snap onto the side. Maybe I just need to make my logo a fraction bigger and that should snap there. So you can see how I'm building this up. Now, um, I do a couple of other things. I always put a block in the top, so A to drawing title. So I'm going, oops, I'm going to make that um, 
something like 36. So I always have a drawing title in the top left. And apart from that, at the moment, nothing else is um, going to be added. I might have different titles. I might have scale drawn by dates um, and maybe some other information, but you can see how that gets added. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to pick all of them, um, ever my is it? Yes. Yes. In the two, there are two areas that are completely underused in layouts, and if you can. Um, start using layers in layout the way you use them in SketchUp, life is a lot easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer and I'm going to call this title block or master title block. So I'm simply just creating the layer and I need to select the geometry and move to layer. So move to master title block. And I've got a couple of options. I can hit the I icon, it switches it off. There's a little paper symbol at the end. And if I hit that so that it's not one, but two pieces of paper, it means this will appear on every subsequent drawing that I automatically create. The other thing that's really useful is I can lock this geometry. So I do not accidentally delete it, but mostly I do not accidentally select it. Now, this is the background title block for every project that you create, you then need information. So I'm now having locked that, I can go in and type name. And I may be going to change the font. I'm going to go to light. I'm going to change it to 14. 14 is probably fine. I can pick this and then copy it into place. We can nudge using the arrow keys. Now, under things like status, I might have a whole list here so that I might have planning. And then I'm going to hit return and we're going to have discussion. Maybe hit return. Um, what are the status? Construction. Tender or quotation. Oops, cut block quotation, etc. And I will leave that like that because that prompts me to come in and delete the ones that I don't need. And what I would do, whoops, here is then just create a release. Um, one one April. 20 and and that way i can simply cut and paste this um, for future releases and then i can pick this geometry, it will only pick the geometry that I need. The other one is locked, so it's not selectable. And then I might create a new layer and I might call this project title block. Block, bloik. Block, right. And then I can select this, zoom in. Select it, move to layer. So that goes onto the project title block. Now, the hierarchy of these layers is important, unlike in SketchUp, because when you create geometry, a, if it's on a layer above another layer, then the geometry on the, the top layer sits over the geometry on the layer below. <clears throat> so I might, um, when I create drawings, I do several things. 
I create unique geometry inside layout. So I'm going to create a layer for what I would call blocks and fills. So I can block off other pieces of geometry that I don't need, or I want to create some hatching. And then I'm going to create oops, uh, another layer called dimensions. So I can put all my dimensions onto one layer. I'm going to create another layer called notes and specifications. Notes and specifications, Let me just drag down. Um, if I'm doing something like a planting plan, then I will import geometry and use it as a reference to then create my planting plans. So frequently I bring geometry in from SketchUp that is reference geometry not actual drawing geometry. So I will create a layer called reference geometry. Reference SketchUp geometry so that I don't mistake it for something else. And then hit return. And there may be some others, but these are standard layers that I will use mostly on a project by project basis. Not everything gets dimensions, not everything gets reference geometry, but I keep these layers. And that gives me the um, ability to put geometry onto those layers and then to switch it off because frequently just like SketchUp your drawings can get quite cluttered or you're trying to do something and you realize that when you select and move you've moved the underlying SketchUp drawing not the dimension or the note which you thought it selected so putting onto a layer and switching off all dimensions whilst you do something else um, when you do it, you're grateful for remembering to do it. It's, it's really getting into the habit of using this layer structure. Now, a couple of other little things, just like SketchUp, there's some background settings in here. Um, I'm going to go into, excuse me, <coughs> uh, we set up the title block, we have set up the drawing sheets, so I'm going to go into layout preferences. And down on this list, I've got scales. Um, now, if you went into your layout session at the moment, you would see a whole load of architectural or imperial based units. And right at the bottom, you probably have about five or six, which are metric. And it's slightly different in a Mac and a PC, but pretty much what you want to do is click to the end of your, um, or start at the end of your metrics and then delete all of your metric scales. And then you start to add in metrics. And I've got a whole load of weird and wonderful ones, but if you look carefully, you'll see there's a pattern that I've gone one to one, one to two, one to three, one to four, uh, one to five, um, one to six, one to seven, I don't quite know why these aren't in order. Um, I can't move them around either. But I've got everything up to one to 10, then I've gone one to 15, one to 20, one to 25, uh, one to 35. Um, because in some cases, the drawings I create do not need to be actual scale, as long as it fits well on the drawing because some stuff doesn't get dimensions, it's really visual. And being able to click one to try one to and still doesn't fit one to 40, appears and drop down and place drawing, I think it does look a bit neat to use. So to have that, Matt, we have to open up and leave them um, off to so that every time I start in um, layout, I have my panels already up and running. Now, last thing, I know we're reaching the end of an hour, but I created an A2 drawing file, save as templates. 
give it a name. So I would call this GZ because it's something unique. A2. I might not need to say anything else, um, but you might say A2 drawing sheet, drawing sheet, and then save. I'm not going to save because um, I've got several versions, but it saves the drawing sheet and this configuration. Now, having done one, what I might now do is select all of this geometry, but it's locked. So I've got to make sure that I unlock my geometry so don't forget i can copy that and then i want to go back and set up this because i can cut and paste so i can go file new go to my a3 sheets now this is what i actually want and paste it in now none of my layers have, have now been set because i'm about to create a new template now, uh, keeping this really quick, I would take my title blocks and just move everything around and reconfigure it onto an A3 sheet. You can start with A3 and rework it up to A2, or start with A2 and copy and paste. But I really don't change typeface size, it just gets a little bit more squashed up, but it, it's not bad. And then simply, set up your layer structure again file save as template and you've now got an a3 sheet so i would just obviously change that to a3 now there are several other settings in here and um, we will start to talk about those when we look at creating um, detailed drawings from sketchup because we will be doing all of those um, in layouts, but we there's a whole load of things that we can do with layers and uh, especially with something called scrapbooks, where we're starting to play around with creating symbols. So I can have irrigation symbols and planting symbols and electrical symbols, and I just simply drag them in. So if I'm setting up a, a simple electric drawing, it's a case of drag and then just create lines in between. Now that would then um, allow you to create a modified templates just by setting up that side of things but we're not going to go into that because that can be uh, quite time consuming now that is pretty much um, everything that i wanted to cover um, i hope that's been useful the efforts of setting up warehouse and the efforts uh, to put things into into your layout sheets is really useful um, probably need your title box to be more detailed than you might think. Um, I can probably think of four or five other areas that might need information. And you might want to add a copyright symbol um, with your company or your trading name to make sure that everything you send out goes on the drawing and therefore is attributed and therefore copyrighted to you. I hope that was useful. Um, I I'm very happy if anybody has any questions to answer them. So you can email me. Um, Elmtech will be issuing uh, my details. Um, most of you probably already know me anyway. But uh, tomorrow's session um, is where we will pick up from this and we're going to start with modeling for presentation, which is block modeling or mass modeling, where we create a very quick SketchUp model and that's the model that we use to get a result from a client as quickly as possible. And once we've got to that, we would then cover what we're going to do on Monday, which is the detail modeling and how we then start to refine the initial model that then um, with by adding actual paving sizes or block sizes or resolving the depths of walls, um, tread heights, and then capturing that within a model so that then we can extract that information and start to set out drawings. And then the final day, which will be on Tuesday, is I will start to talk about um, the kinds of add-ons in SketchUp that I use and how I use them in a very brief way. We're not gonna get through all of them, but I'll pick out maybe my top 10 or the ones that I think it's really useful for you to get going with, and it will introduce you to a whole new level of modeling in SketchUp. So thank you very much indeed for listening. Um, 
I hope that I see you tomorrow. If not, have a great weekend and happy modeling.